Evansville brewing history goes back to the 1830s. The Tin Man and Carson breweries are the most recent to call Evansville home, and they have revitalized the city's brewing heritage. There were many breweries that have operated in Evansville over the years, but there was one that outshined the rest. Sterling Brewery had the honor of being the longest lasting brewery in Evansville and one of the last major breweries in the state. It was a local and international favorite, and people today still remember the building that stood just next to the Lloyd, where One Life Church and Sterling Square are today. In 1868, Hartmitz and Son Brewery founded a brewery on the corner of Fourth and Ingle. Here, the Sterling brand of beer was born. They later merged with two other breweries to form the Evansville Brewing Association and moved to Fulton Avenue, where they began to build the Sterling Empire. Uh, the old brewery was around for quite a while, and then about 1880s, uh, it kind of phased out, and they built the new modern Fulton Avenue Brewery, caddy corner from it, on uh, the corner of Indiana and, and Fulton. Um, the brewery was a nice big brick building. It was state-of-the-art. Um, and it kind of phased out the old one. I think they tried revitalizing the old brewery, but it really never uh, really got back up to speed. The uh, Fulton Avenue Brewery then um, was pretty much one of the big ones in town other than Cook. It expanded quite a bit at the beginning. Um, in the 1890s, there was actually a, a, a brick collapse uh, on one of the buildings, and it actually killed a couple of the workers there. But uh, once that was cleared out. They built the iconic stock house that most people recognize there, right at the corner of Pennsylvania, the Lloyd Expressway, and Fulton. Um, that was built around that time, and they really kept expanding quite a bit over the first part of the turn of the century, uh, gaining in popularity. Not even prohibition could shut it down. Instead, the brewery adapted by canning and producing drinks such as soda and cider. When prohibition met its end in 1933, the Evansville Brewing Association, now called Sterling Brewery, reopened for business. Cook Brewery was the only other local brewery to reopen. Sterling also got new equipment in the 30s. With its name change and state-of-the-art equipment, Sterling made a promise to provide the best product possible. Daily tours of the facility were provided to the public in the 1930s. The community enjoyed the Rat Skeller, which was connected to the brewery, while employees enjoyed free beer at work. We would have beer fights once in a while, spray each other with beer, and go home sticky. <laughs> all your clothes, have to wash all your clothes, be full of beer. And uh, we would take a, a can of beer, and the pop tops were different than they are now. When they first popped open, they just made a little tiny hole. So you take a can of beer and you put it on a motor or something, it's hot, and you get it hot, and then you pop it open, and then you throw it in the middle of a bunch of people, and it sprayed beer everywhere like a fountain. <laughs> and that was a kind of a favorite thing for us to do to one another if we were trying to get even. The beer was very popular with consumers, and it was said that Sterling beer is a goblet full of flavor and friendliness. It's the difference between licking dry lips and feeling wonderfully quenched and refreshed. It's an invitation to throw care and tension overboard. It's escape into a loose tied land of relaxation and contentment. Sterling's popularity reached far and wide. They shipped their products all over the world from Canada to Japan. In 1956, three visitors from the Russian embassy visited Evansville and went to Sterling Brewery. They wondered why they couldn't buy Sterling beer in Washington, and went as far as to say that they like vodka and beer equally well and prefer to take each straight and not in combination. The 50s also saw the rise of Sterling Bell. She became the face of Sterling beer, and she was on many commercials, television specials, and radio shows. 1972 brought more change to Sterling. The company was purchased by G. Heilman Brewing Company, a brewery based in La Crosse, Wisconsin. John Galstead was his name. He was supposed to be the hatchery man. He was supposed to come down and close it up. Well, he was down here and he walked through the plant, you know, and everything. And, but after he was there for a while and got acquainted with all the guys, 
He went to G. Harmon Brewery, him, and told him, said, Jerry, it's a nice little brewery down there. You better hang on to it. Early in 1988, it was announced that Sterling was being closed. The city of Evansville had recently raised the price for sewage utilities twice, taking a toll on the company. According to G. Heilman Brewing, the Sterling brand was not one of their top 10 most popular beers anymore. Dry malt beer was viewed as an antique recipe in need of retirement. For a period of time, the local brewery had been kept open by producing brands popular in the South. Since G. Heilman Brewing had built a brewery in Perry, Georgia, Sterling was no longer needed. The pros to closing Sterling were greater than the cons for their owner. Evansville was thrown into distress. Not only were 200 jobs now on the line, but Sterling was also the last operating brewery in the city. Many local consumers were angry and upset. They were very loyal to Sterling and they never bought any other brand. At the time of the closing, workers were making $13 an hour. The Evansville community seemed to agree. Sterling could not be closed. Under the leadership of the union, Brewery Workers Local 1153, workers quickly began brainstorming ways to buy the brewery themselves. If every employee contributed $5,000, they would have $1 million. They had 12 weeks to decide, and the clock was ticking. Tom Mullerin, a union official, determined it was just not possible for the workers to purchase it. But if the right investors got behind it, the brewery could be saved. The right investors came from the Evansville Brewing Company. John Dernan, owner of Cook Label Company, Mark Mattingly, a local attorney, and John Brzezinski of Texas came together to found this company with explicit purpose of saving Sterling Brewery. Together, they bought it along with a few other brands from G. Heilman Brewing. On Tuesday, September 20th, 1988, workers were finally able to report back at 7 a.m. to begin work again. Production picked up, and by 1994, Sterling was shipping 40% of its product overseas, mostly to Japan, Great Britain, and South America. Unfortunately, nine years after the miraculous saving of the brewery, they were forced to declare bankruptcy. This time, there would be no fairy tale ending for the brewery and its workers. October 1, 1997, saw the closing of Sterling. The Evansville Brewing Company closed Sterling's doors for good. The workers left, their jobs were gone, the crusade to save their brewery was lost after nine years. The last major brewery in Indiana had met its end. They had security the last uh, month or so before the brewery closed, they brought security in and they, they worked around, you know, stayed there because it was shutting down. And the security guard and I were the last ones to close the door. And that was in October of 97. Well, it was very emotional. It really was. I mean, 30 years and your friends and, you know, it was, it was very emotional. Uh, it didn't really sink into me, I guess, until later on, you know, but uh, I did, I did, was the last one to walk out. There was only, there was only two of us that was left. We kind of, you know, turned the lights off and made everything. They didn't really run production. They cleaned, pretty well cleaned everything out. But I, me, I was the last one to punch out. Mm -hmm. Part of the brewery was raised in 1998 but few buildings were left behind. In 2012, One Life Church made part of Sterling its home. A copper brew pot sits in the open of what is now called Sterling Square. The pot is the last remnant of what was once an iconic landmark on the west side of Evansville. Sterling beer is not gone though. The brand changed hands a few times over the years, but eventually found its way to Louisville in 2012. The brewery is still in operation, and the brand can be found in local restaurants and bars, such as the Gerst House, Tin Man, and Lamasco. Those who worked at Sterling either went on to other jobs or retired, but they never forgot the time they spent at Sterling brewing and bottling the beer. It was the best job I ever had, and I went into heating air after that, and I worked 21 years in heating air, but 
the brewery is still my heart. And I, I mean, I love working at the brewery. Today, they have an annual reunion at Hilltop Grove to reminisce and tell stories of their time at the brewery. They celebrate the jobs they had and the company they worked for. And they will always remember the time they bottled beer for one of the oldest breweries in the country, Sterling. Do you hear that bell? That Sterling bell. It's inviting you to have a Sterling time. Get Sterling beer for fun and cheer.